Hey there my wonderful audience today i have got an exciting video lined up for you and trust me it's going to be a game changer in your photo editing journey so without further ado let's dive right in and unlock those pro level editing tips and tricks in this particular photo i am aiming to improve the lighting Luckily for us Photoshop offers a set of automated effects called quick actions. These are single click solutions that streamline the editing process. So here is how you can access them. To get started head to the help menu and choose Photoshop help. This will open up the discover panel. Now scroll down to find quick actions. Click on quick actions and you will see a range of categories like apply effects, edit backgrounds, edit portraits make selections, retouch and stylize. For the purpose of enhancing lighting, we will focus on retouch and then select adjust lighting. With just one click on the apply button, you will witness an instant improvement in the lighting of the photo. These quick actions provide a speedy and effortless way to achieve specific effects or enhancements. As of the time I recorded this, there are over 20 quick actions available, each designed to simplify the editing process and save you valuable time. This adjust lighting quick action is prime example of how you can swiftly enhance the lighting in your photo without the need for manual adjustments. Photographers often face a challenge when taking pictures of landscapes. Just imagine a sunny scene with a bright blue sky and darker ground below. Sometimes the sky might look too bright and washed out. People might try to make the blue sky look stronger by adding more color but this can make the whole picture look too colorful. Instead of using the usual way, there is a neat trick you can try. There is a tool called luminance in the HSL tab that can help. Instead of making the blue color stronger, you can make the blue parts of the picture a bit darker using the luminance tool. This makes the sky look more interesting without making everything too colorful. So when you use this trick, your photos of the sky will stand out and look really nice. It's like giving your pictures a little bit of magic touch to make the sky even more beautiful and the whole scene more exciting. Black and white can make a portrait photos look really really cool especially simple fashion shots. But changing the color photo to a black and white can sometimes make it look less clear or lose some of the details in the picture. Luckily there are some helpful tools in Lightroom and Camera Raw that can make black and white portraits look amazing. Here is how you can do it. First make a copy of the photo by pressing Ctrl or Command plus J. Then right click on the copy and choose convert to smart object. After that open this copy in the camera raw filter. Once you are in the camera raw filter, go to the presets section. You will find it on the left side of the develop module. Look for presets made for black and white portraits. There are many options to choose from and you can see how they will look by hovering over your cursor over them. Pick the one that fits your photo the best. When you have found the right one, apply it. Now go to basics adjustments and slightly lower the contrast. To make the photo pop, add some texture and clarity and reduce the brightness around the edges and corners by moving the post crop vignetting slider to around minus 25 points. This will make the picture feel more atmospheric. Next open the masking tools and find the option for person masking. Choose the iris option and click on create to make an iris mask. Then scroll down to the effect slider and adjust the dehaze, clarity and texture sliders to bring out the details in the eyes. You can also increase the contrast a little bit and experiment with other settings as well. And that's it. You will see the difference between the original and the edited version. Using the black and white presets in Lightroom and Camera Raw can help you create amazing black and white portraits without losing the quality. Did you know there is a neat trick using just two sliders that can make any skin look beautiful 
by changing the skin tones and lighting. Let me show you how this works. First I will make a copy of the layer and open it in camera raw. Now let's head to the color mixer and select luminance. In this section all we have to do is increase the values for red and oranges. These colors are what represent skin tones. By increasing them you can make the skin look brighter. Next let's move on to the saturation settings. Adjust the red and orange sliders to make the skin tones more vibrant. To add a finishing touch, lower the vignetting to make the edges and corners of the image a bit darker. This will help draw attention to the main subject in the portrait. The result, a beautiful portrait with enhanced skin tones and lighting. It's pretty amazing how just tweaking the red and orange sliders can make such a difference in how the skin looks and how the overall lighting of the photo comes together. Have you ever experienced laggy performance with the brush tool in Photoshop? Some friends have mentioned encountering this issue. Imagine this, when you try to paint something using the brush, the stroke seems to move across the screen in a sluggish, slow motion manner. Here is a handy tip. Take a look at the options bar at the top when you have the brush selected. You will find a setting called smoothing. If you adjust the smoothing to 0%, you should notice a significant improvement in the brush speed and responsiveness. Now if you are someone who enjoys illustration or painting, higher smoothing values can help get rid of those tiny wobbles in your strokes, resulting in smoother lines. But be aware that this improvement in stroke quality might come at the expense of overall performance, making things a bit slower. However, if your focus is on retouching and not so much on drawing or painting, it's a good idea to keep the smoothing at zero. This way you will maintain a snappy and efficient brush experience tailored to your retouching needs. In this portrait, I want to get rid of blemishes and dark spots on the model's face. To do this, we will use a healing brush. With this brush, when you click on a spot, it will automatically pick a similar part from another area in the photo and use it to cover up the spot. We will see a circle where you clicked and another circle connected by a line showing where the sample comes from. Now here is the pro tip. If you press the forward slash key, the brush will choose a different sample spot each time. Keep pressing forward slash until you find a better spot that gives you a nicer result. For example, if I remove a score mark by clicking on it, you might notice a dark area appear after using the healing brush. To fix this, simply just press the forward slash key and the brush will automatically sample from a new spot, correcting the issue. This handy trick works in both Lightroom and Camera Raw. If you haven't tried it before, give it a shot. It can really make a difference in getting rid of those unwanted marks and spots on your portraits. In this photo, I want to bring the subject closer to the each other and make them appear as if they are nearer to the camera. To achieve this, follow these simple steps. Duplicate the layer containing the photo, use the Content Aware Move tool which allows you to select an object and move it to a different part of the image. Make sure the new placement aligns well with the background's horizon. The clever part is that the Content Aware algorithm will automatically fill in the area where you move the object from the and blend the moved object seamlessly into the image. For my specific goal, I'm going to select both subjects and move them closer to the center. To adjust their size, I will drag the corner handles to scale them. It's important to note that when you resize the image, the software removes pixels while preserving the more detailed ones, which helps maintaining the overall scene's appearance. Now, if you compare the before and after images, you will notice that the subjects appear closer together and closer to the camera. This trick is particularly handy for outdoor shots and travel photos where you want to adjust the composition or positioning of the main subjects while keeping the natural look and feel of the scene intact. Did you know that you can use content aware scaling to stretch a model's legs in your photo? Here is how you can do it. First create a duplicate copy of the layer by pressing Ctrl or Command plus J. Select the crop tool and extend the canvas size vertically to make room for the stretched legs. 
Now go to edit menu and choose content aware scaling. This incredible technology lets you resize an image while keeping the important parts of the image in the right proportions. It does this by analyzing the image and removing less important areas of pixels like plain backgrounds before affecting the main subject. As you scale the image, make sure to keep an eye on the subject and avoid overdoing it. This way you can stretch the legs while maintaining the right proportions. Once you are satisfied, you can crop the image to finalize the changes. Take a look at the before and after images to see the difference. This technique can be a fantastic tool when you need to adjust proportions in a photo like stretching legs while preserving the overall composition and visual appeal. Fixing color cast in portraits can be done using various methods, but here is a simple trick that I use always. Simply add a curves adjustment layer to your photo. In the curves adjustment panel, you will find an eyedropper tool labeled as sample in image to set gray point. Click on this tool. Now look for an area in the photo where the hair and skin meet. This region typically represents the neutral gray tones in portraits. Click on that area with the eyedropper tool. This action tells the Photoshop to adjust the color balance based on the selected neutral point. By clicking on the hair skin junction with the middle gray eyedropper, you are essentially telling the Photoshop to correct the color cast in the portrait by neutralizing the colors in that region. This helps in achieving more accurate and natural looking skin tones. As a photographer, it's important to draw attention to your main subject without directly altering the subject itself. One effective technique I often use for this purpose is within the camera raw filter. Here is how you can do it. Start by duplicating the layer containing your image. Convert this duplicated layer into a smart object by going to filter, convert to smart filters. Now access the camera raw filter. Inside the camera raw filter, click on the masking tool in the create new mask workspace, select the select background option. The camera raw filter will automatically identify and select the background. Now click on the three dot icon that appears and choose intersect mask with linear gradient. At this point, position the gradient tool over the photo. By doing this, you create a gradual transition effect that centers the viewer's focus on the main subject. With the background masked, you can now adjust it to enhance the focus on your subject. Play around with settings like exposure, contrast and highlights to refine the background. By reducing these settings, you can help emphasize your main subject. This adjustment allows you to bring your subject into sharp focus without directly altering the subject itself. What's great is that this technique is non-destructive because you have applied it as a smart filter preserving the integrity of your original image. That's it for this video guys. I hope you found these tips and tricks helpful and informative. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more tutorials and tips. Don't forget to like, share and comment. Stay tuned for next video. Take care and happy editing.